the weapon speed for concentration is the same as the spell, right? No, there's no speed for concentration. Oh, nice. You do concentration as a standard action, right? Uh, yeah, should be. Yeah, it's just there's feats you can take. Uh, to uh, make it no, I don't have to. Swift and move and whatnot. You can't use other powers while you're doing it, but it means you can run up and attack. Yeah. I'm just going to maintain it, so even though I crit, but yeah. I mean, you could try the thrust to just finish it off or something. Yeah, thrust your head tight tentacles into its mind. Um. I'll wait until uh, you I, fall first. I think we first. got it. No, I mean... You already we already did like that much damage and I haven't done anything to it, so I'm just gonna try and get it to do nothing or to be inconvenienced. Okay. Okay. What are you doing, Baldron? You're just concentrating? Yeah. Wow, you I guys rolled shit this. initiative. Yeah, How many weird. parries do you get around uh Revere? What's up? How many parries do you get around? Eight or eight around. Eight around? How do you oh, get that, eight sorry, around? That's, I, I, I get, I forgot, I have it buffed, that's buffed, I get eight around, I get one, it's one plus your dex, right? So I get six around. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. And you used four of them already. Four. Yeah, but it's in the round. Not for you. Oh, shit, okay. I might be dead here. We'll see. Wait, did it roll to manage to attack? It's still confused. Oh, sorry, I meant to do that. 71, I think that's the same. Exactly the same. Attack the nearest person. Someone wanna um, actually don't lock that down because it'll flee. Yeah, but you get an AOO, right? Oh, yeah, someone locked that down. Okay. To what? 70. 70? Okay, I locked it down. Okay. Yeah, because a 25, 29, 24, 32, and... Yeah. A 19 will all be hits. Uh, yeah, so and he's going to have to try and parry the first two, and he'd get crit, yeah. Yeah. So to them to flip, it's entangled, so it will suck at it, okay. Yeah, it uh, it's confused, and it will flee. So uh, you get an attack of opportunity on it as it tries to flee. Yeah, that would have been, yeah. been a really bad round for me, and I can't fly anymore. And it moves at half movement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that I just re I was just thinking it would have it would have to basically jump into the air and f fly, pretty much at ground level because it needs to double move to move its movement speed to stay in the air. Yeah. Okay. Well, then it will just uh, move thirty feet away. This thing I thought was going to be a lot more deadly. Well, uh, once I got it still entangled. You really shouldn't say that when you almost got fucked this round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were about true. to die. I was about to die, that's fair. Yeah, let's be clear, you just got crit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that that was the well, clutch. Was how, the... how does it move 30 if it's entangled? Because it can move 60 feet in a round and it moves at half when it's entangled. Oh, it's taking both actions, okay. Yeah, it's the only action it can take is flee, so it double moves away. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to move away as fast as possible at top speed. All right, go charge it, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, I don't think it has line of sight to... R oh, maybe it can run. It can run a little bit. Well, I don't think you can run when you're in tank. You can't run when you're in Oh, yeah, you can run. Okay, never mind. You said it's top speed, and I was like, okay, well, then it does the run action. Oh, I fucked that up. What the fuck did you do there? I put a slash where I... Yeah, I'll just re-roll. Uh, six plus four. Yeah. He didn't roll a six is the problem. Oh, he did roll a six, yeah. But he rolled yeah, a one, which oh, is even better. Okay. Okay, um, well, I used up all my good rolls last round, so... Right. I, got all, I got all my parries back this round. Uh, I'm gonna move up a bit 
Uh, so it's in range of my frost. My range of my frost. Yes, it is. Okay, and now let's first of all throw fire. Yes. Um, Azura with the kill steal. Um, I, well, if he's not going to hit it, then someone should. Uh, <laughs> or I'm going to kill it. I, I stand by that confusion. I mean, for me, that was clutch there. Yeah, that was huge. That that basically made the encounter because it would have killed the Riviera right outright. Um, as can someone lock that to just finish it off? You're funny. None of us have luck left. Okay, cool. I think Riviera still has uh, one luck left. Oh, does he? Oh, does he? Okay. No, I don't. Um, I I had to use. I just forgot to mark it down. But I had to use that luck to uh, not okay. die. Oh yeah, you well, used okay. it for your parry. Mm -hmm. okay. In any case, uh, that's my turn. Doesn't that mean Azura has a luck left? No, because she... I used it to lock down the seventy-one. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough. Then uh, we are back to initiative. Ooh. Okay, that's one dead female probably. Yeah, if you hit it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Three attacks. Let's go. Fire. And does that hit? Uh yeah, I think so. I don't yeah, that's his touch AC, so I don't think there's anything that would change that. So okay. you kill it on the first one. Yeah, it's dead. Okay. Well, that was a CR7 encounter that I wasn't even sure I was going to put you up against because I thought it might be too much for you. I mean, it wasn't going <laughs> to kill the Riviera, so... Sorry, what was that? It it almost killed the Riviera. Yeah, oh yeah, the, you guys used excellent tactics. Like I was saying, with the, uh, the bugbear encounter, I would have just cast Entangle on the bugbears and shot them. Mm. I would have just said, everybody move back, move back the distance and put 80 feet of uh, entangle in front of you and shoot them until they get there. Didn't oh, they have a ranged weapon? They did have ranged weapons, but they have javelins. Um, oh, so, yeah. Uh, up against the ogre, that's not going to do much, but uh, against uh, bugbears with javelins, they're going to, if you move back more than 30 feet, they right off the bat suffer a minus two, and they're entangled, that's another minus two. No, that's fair. You pretty much nerf their ability to attack you, and then you just pick them off while they're entangled. Kind of sucks for Riviere, because he won't be able to use his best abilities, but if you can just stand back and shoot fish in a barrel, why wouldn't you? But I didn't know how many spells you had left and whatnot, so I wasn't sure what the mechanics of it were. Like, I, If you were fully ready for that encounter... It shouldn't have been even a slight challenge, but if you were completely depleted, it was going to be a brutal challenge if you had to fight them nearly with no powers. Absolutely. Very fair. Damn. Okay, we are spending as much as we need to harvest every single body part off this thing. We bet. We've already used everything we have. I don't care. Um, we will stay here for an hour if we have to. We are harvesting this thing. Aren't you supposed to be like really close now to Belgian territory? In any case, here is a survival role to harvest this shit. Okay, you succeed in harvesting it. Um, you probably want to take its blood instead of the harpy's blood. Yeah, I'll rinse out this water skin. Unless someone else wants to use their water skin. Uh, I don't even have a water skin. That's fair. Yeah, I'm not going to force Riviera if he wants his water, so I'll just empty this out unless someone interrupts me. Okay, well, the Chimera blood is worth five gold pieces per uh, per ounce, and you can get another 16 ounces. Not a huge improvement, but it's extra. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm taking it. Um, uh, Riviera, maybe you want to actually use your water skin at this point, because we're about to just march to the elves. I guess. Why can we just drag this thing with us to the elves and get it harvested there? Because that will take like a day. Uh, that's true. Yeah, you guys are still several hours from the uh, the elves. Um, it's also like three hours away from them now. 
because we just moved right yep but you guys i think have traveled seven or eight hours already today so you'd be forced marching if you go further let's just force march like let's get the fuck out of this wild territory nope that's i fair. mean Rivier's. if we can do that safely that's sure but i mean if we're tired and Rivier's out of power i barely used any spells so far but Rivier's out of power I'm 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 completely. That that was my last shot. That was my last load. Yeah, and he's kind of out tank and like defense right now. The cannon fodder without any defense is kind of a. Yeah, let's see. I, I don't want to call him useless, but. One moment, one moment. <laughs> Do it. I, like I could cast bark skin on him. No, nah, it's fine. Let's just uh, harvest what we can and then go to the city. Yeah, that's what he's trying to determine, is what what you guys want to do. You've got another couple hours of travel time that you have to force march for. Um, so you'd be making checks, and whether you are more encumbered or less encumbered, you still have to make those checks. The question is, do you want to be fatigued when you get attacked next? I feel like the forced march might be the best way to get there quickly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is the best way to get there quickly, but okay, that's fine. No, yeah, I'm just making sure you're aware of the risks. If you want to do that, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, it sounds like we're close enough to maybe not encounter anything else also if we just make a push for it. I mean, it's just a con check. How bad can your cons be? Actually, my con's probably the worst. Here. As I said, you're the one that's going to be taking the hits, so it's your choice. If you're fine taking the risks... Yeah, I'm fine good. taking it. Okay. Okay, so um, you guys harvest your uh, chimera. You want to roll a... Oh, you already rolled a really good check, didn't you, Revere? Yeah. For the chimera, yeah. Yeah, 25. Okay. Okay, um, the hide isn't particularly valuable, uh, but with a good check, you can get a couple hundred gold pieces for that. Um, the bones uh, will uh, give you another couple hundred gold pieces, so there's 400. I assume you don't want the meat? Um, not enough to sell, maybe for a meal as we go, but that's about it. Okay. Do you like cat? It's the other white meat. That's fair. Um, yeah, I I know a few hunters who like have like lynx pelts and cougar pelts, and they're like, yeah, no one eats cat, but if you're hungry, you can eat it. Um, you can extract the fire gland. That's worth two hundred gold pieces. Very nice. Uh, it has three brains, and they're worth 100 gold pieces each. We don't have anything to hold them, so... Yeah, but you're going to force march to town. You put them in a sack. Oh, right. <laughs> That's going to be a sack, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you take it Good out, job. you wash it off, you put it in a sack, and you place it delicately, delicately on top of your backpack. It's going to be really funny at a... Actually, like, we, can, we, can, we can do better. You can put the sack with the brain uh, near me as bird, and then when I shift into a donkey, then it will melt into me. There you go. Okay, I think that's everything you can get from the Chimera. And Joe rolled the treasure for the Harpy. Nice. Oh, that ring of armies. nice. Yeah, if you have two sets of armor, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, I don't want to sleep in my freaking full plate when I eventually... I actually, no, I'm a dex based character. I'm not getting full plate. Never mind. That's a useless ring. Very cool. Okay, cool. so you guys continue south. Um, About an hour to the south of where you are. Uh, you come up on some more uh, rune stones. You 
these ones? Yes. It's a 19 linguistics. Nice, you both rolled really well. I'm not gonna bother rolling. Okay, um, you are entering the Unicorn Sanctuary and uh, Pegasus Point. Excellent. Viewing how we, only. Yeah, how do we get around it? Or can Why we would get, you want to get around it? Well, if it's viewing only, I, I'm assuming it's kind of like a zoo. Or can we just walk through it and we just can't do any damage anything? You're not um, supposed to be fighting Pegasuses. No, I mean, like, the whole thing is viewing only. That, to me, would seem like... No, uh, Pegasus Point answer. is viewing only. It is just a uh, a rise, a, an escarpment that has a um, troop of uh, Pegasi. And you're not allowed up on the ridge, so generally you can only see them from the ground. Oh, okay. okay. So but we, can can the, we can go through the... You can go through the stuff. Unicorn uh, Sanctuary. Um, there are uh, a large... Uh, Herd of unicorns to the south. They oh, patrol yeah. through the forest uh, around the northern part of the Elven Kingdom. Excellent. Oh. Let's do that. Well, let's go. Okay, as you guys proceed south into the unicorn uh, sanctuary. You are confronted by a golden-haired unicorn. Okay, I will immediately shift into my nymph form and greet it while bowing to it uh, in Sylvan. I mutter to Baldrin in uh, in whatever language we speak common. Stupid fay, I was so high on so high and mighty. <laughs> he would chuckle and. Kind of does not say, can we just go around? There is no need to go around. These are friendly creatures. Yeah, friendly to you. They're chaotic good. Right, so... They're lawful or... neutral. Yeah. yeah and... They will be on their best behavior. Yeah, but we're also talking in the common language, so it's fine. We're, we're not trying to offend you. We're specifically yeah, speaking yeah. a language that you don't understand, so we can talk shit behind your back. Okay. He just said yeah, okay. Um, Azura, well, yeah. the very first thing you notice about this unicorn is that it has golden hair, which um, you have not encountered before. Okay. Normally, so um, you can roll a arcana or planes. Planes of nature, okay. Okay. Um, you have not encountered a celestial charger before. But you have heard of rumors of them. Um, they're basically just unicorns that are uh, from a celestial realm. They are uh, gold and silver colored for male and female versus uh, like blue and pink. Mm -hmm. oh, John, can you shrink me if you got a sec? Yep. All right. So, as mentioned, I'm bowing to it and greeting it in silver. Okay, um, it says, uh, why are you here? We are trying to find our way to the Elven Kingdom. We were attacked by quite a large number of harassers, recently a Chimera. Uh, we hope to reach the safety of the Elven lands and then proceed back to my homeland in Aporia. He asks if you uh, killed the Chimera. Um, yes, we did fight and kill the Chimera in battle. You can show it its, its brains if you want. Do not show him its brains. We could. We could. We got three brains. I'm not showing, showing him its brains. I'm saying that uh, it descended upon us and we killed it in self-defense. Okay, um, he thanks you for your service to the realm. Um, the Chimera has been uh, plaguing this area for a long time. 
it frequently swoops down and attacks the young and uh, carries them off before we have an opportunity to uh, stop him. Oh, one second. I'm actually a servant of Maiki. Does that mean I vanquished an enemy of the forest? Uh, in this case, yes. Awesome. Okay, because that increases my affiliation score. Cool. Uh, I uh, say, okay, I'm very glad to hear that we managed to make the forest safer. There seems to be quite enough dangerous creatures lurking around here and attacking innocent bypassers. Yes, the road to the north is uh, very dangerous. Um, the eastern trail is uh, much safer. Yeah, we didn't choose the path. We originally chased a demon that uh, made its way to Prime, and uh, after fighting with it, we were just trying to get to safety. Okay. Um, would you like me to take you to the gates of the city? Uh, yes, thank you very much. That would be most welcome. Okay. Well, he kind of bows towards you so you can uh, climb on. Okay, uh, I still have the gear I'm supposed to carry. Uh, well, you don't have it because you'd have to drop it on the ground because you're feeble and weak. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess the rest of them could carry it temporarily. Can you guys handle it? If you're uh, not fighting, he's willing to give us protection and get us to the gates. I mean, after force marching, can we handle it? Probably not. We need a quadruped to handle it. Yeah. Um. Okay, I, I will thank it and uh, give it uh, good berries that I will summon uh, to reward it, but mention that um, I would have to wild shape uh, back into a quadruped to allow us to carry uh, our equipment. But we are most grateful and will be glad to follow it. Okay, he lets out a weird high-pitched uh, whinny and uh, a group of unicorns come running towards you. Okay, cool. Then I get to run, ride a unicorn and I guess they could carry the gear? Yes, they will carry your gear for you. Awesome. Nice. All right. I bend over to Baldrin. What the fuck is going on? I say in our common tongue. Oh, she's uh, uh, taming a unicorn. Not taming it and negotiating with it. Uh, or rather making fun of it. Paramax is uh, just going to slowly chitter over to the unicorn out of curiosity. Okay. Um, so I give it good berries anyway, and I most graciously accept its offer of riding it. Okay. Um, so he takes off. I think he moves at a ridiculous speed. Yeah, 60 feet. So they uh, basically charge through the forest. Um, you don't get much of a view of uh, uh, Pegasus Point from here. Um, but you can roll a perception check. Baldron. I don't care about Pegasi. <laughs> not Fair interested not. in this at all. Don't no. care. They're just horses with horns on them. That's all it is. True that. So there's unicorns. The Pegasi are with wings. Uh, that is not true. Uh, Riviera, you notice a, uh, a foal who is... Uh, learning to fly he's flapping around uh pretty awkwardly in the air um he jumps off of the ridge and mostly just uh glides to the ground he tries to, every time he tries to flap he just kind of drops like 10 feet and then panics and straightens his wings again um azura you notice that the foal has a unicorn horn oh huh. so there are like unicorns with wings yes this is awesome i have a question like 
I know there are handle animal checks to try and train the Pegasus, but that assumes you're like training them as a beast. Is it possible to try and convince one to come with you via Valda? Into my mind. Like, um, you can definitely uh, uh, diplomatize a unicorn. It, I think it has a unicorn or a uh, what you would call it, the Pegasus. I think they both have a ten intelligence. The Charger has a thirteen, so he is like above normal human intelligence. Okay. Yeah, I'm not trying to like treat it as an like beast that I'm training. I'm trying to like convince it to come with me. Uh, yeah, a Pegasus, um, they don't, they can't speak, they don't have the vocal capabilities to speak, but they do understand, um, uh, common, or whatever the tongue is in the near area, here it would be Sylvan, um, so you, normally when you train them as steeds, you train them from, uh, infancy, but an adult one you could negotiate with if you wanted to. Okay. You can also take it as a, a cohort. Well, I don't have leadership at the moment. Um, well, I don't use leadership. Um, but when you get to sixth level, if you wanted to recruit uh, some kind of magical beast, you can do that. I use the uh, I use the challenge rating of the creature as the effective level for it. So, a Pegasus is only CR three. Um, so if you had a Pegasus as a cohort, you could do that almost certainly at 6th level. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that's a bit overpowered still to use a uh, cohort slot on him. Um, especially since he basically does nothing except build a mount. Sorry, what was that? No, I'm saying that he's basically only just going to be a mount that I will not try to endanger, so... Uh, using a cohort slot on him seems uh, overpowered. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's uh, an option. You can also just try to have, make friends with it, and uh, then you yeah. can just roll uh, diplomacy checks when you want to get it to do things for you. Okay. So, yeah, I will try to use the ride uh, as a chance to uh, make friends. Um, yeah, I won't be too greedy. This also of charger is OP. Let's try to make friends with one of the young Pegasi. Um, well, the Pegasi are nowhere around you. They're up on the ridge. Ah, I see. I only saw it from this. That's why I had you guys um, roll perceptions. You guys, you're just running past their uh, their area. Okay. You can circle yeah, no, back think... later, but you said you wanted to go to the. Uh, LV yeah, now. no, that makes sense. May maybe I'll head back later then and chat with them. I mean, I could try to make friends with the unicorn, but I think befriending a celestial charger is too OP, so I don't want to unbalance again. Um, maybe I'll try to friend the regular unicorn. Okay, so you guys travel for about an hour, and then you come to a wall of trees uh, with a large uh, gate. It's probably about 30 feet wide and about 20 feet high. And the uh, small group of unicorns kind of circle around in front. And uh, the lead unicorn uh, kneels for you to get off. Okay, I get off of it and thank it once again. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't need to take him with me. It's good to keep friends with him anyway. So I will roll diplomacy to try and maintain a good relationship with him. Okay. Nice. Okay, so I'm friends with the leaders of the unicorn. Okay. Cool. Did you take uh, the community domain? Yes. Interesting. Okay. It's the only domain that gives me eventually the miracle spell, which is amazing. Well, you get miracle as the druid spell anyway. Really? You just don't get it till 10th level. Wait, what? A uh, miracle is not a druid spell. I know, that's why you have to cast it as a 10th level spell. Ah, I see what you're saying. Um, okay. In any case, um, thank you, Noble Unicorn, for getting us to safety. Okay, he thanks you again for ridding them of the um, Chimera Menace and uh, welcomes you to uh, 
the forest and uh, gives you an open invitation to return and visit at your leisure. Thank you. I certainly will. Uh, John, out of, care, out of care of the question, do I know these are Sylvan Elves that we're going to be coming upon? And should I, would I know how to act differently because I'm not a Sylvan Elf? Um, based on the, uh, the build of this, you think this is going to be, uh, high elves because Sylvan Elves generally just live in the forest. They don't have cities. Okay. So they, so I'm, yeah, so I think they're going to be high elves. Yeah. So then just act like a normal. Yeah. I think I may have miss, uh, spoke when I said elven kingdom, this is an elven province, um, the uh, the unicorn asked if you wanted to go to the city, and he brought you to the city, but really just crossing over into the uh, unicorn territory brought you to the elven province. You didn't really have a, a specific place you were going to go. You were just going to the elven area with the hopes of finding someone. Um, in this case, uh, the unicorn took you directly to the city. Yeah, this Perfect. is awesome, because we need to unload all of this crap, otherwise I have to remain a donkey for the rest of my life. Yes. If you had just gone and bartered with the Sylvan Elves, you probably could have gotten rid of most of your low-end stuff, all of your equipment, um, but you wouldn't have anyone to identify your magic items or uh, sell anything you don't want that's high value, because they're not going to have huge amounts of gold. Yeah, but in a city, I guess this won't be a problem. No, in the city, you can do whatever you want. Cool. So I wasn't um, sure how you guys were going to react to the unicorns and whether or not you were going to piss them off, in which case you wouldn't have gotten the free ride to the city. And You, you could have talked to the elves and eventually found the city, but uh, you wouldn't have found it today. Yeah, no, luckily they let me do the negotiation with the unicorns. Hmm. Cool, let's go sell all of our stuff that's about to spoil. Yeah, if you want to go around selling it, um, if you want to roll diplomacy, I'll do the math over the week. Um, I have not done the math yet. Okay. Okay, so you guys approach the door. Um, you can see the wall of trees is actually alive. It is... Um, an Literally looks like um, a bunch of oak trees that were planted ridiculously close together that have all grown into each other. Um, it looks like a palisade from the ground, but you can see at the ground level there's roots going into the ground. Um, and about 30 feet up, there's kind of a canopy. And just under the canopy, you can see uh, a balcony on the outside. And there are like a dozen... Uh, Elven archers on the balcony when you approach and they call out to you and uh, ask who you are. Greetings. Call, are they calling out an Elvish or Sylvan? Uh, they would probably call out in Sylvan because uh, they wouldn't be sure what languages you speak and Sylvan is the common tongue here. Um, if Azura is going, then I won't go, but I would call back out in Elvish. My, or, <clears throat> my common Elvish, whatever that is. I mean, we can both call out. I would say greetings. Um, we are travelers. Um, we just bought the Chimera and are looking for a place of rest and safety and habitation. Okay, what do you say, Revere? I just, yeah, I just pretty much say we have, are trying to get our friend here back to Aboria, and we just need a place of rest for the night, and maybe a couple days, as we've just traveled this, I, I'm, I'm familiar that it's a chaotic uh, plane, right? Yes, I, uh, I keep forgetting to put it in, but you guys should all be, well, you two should be minus two, because this is a chaotic realm. Yeah, I would. I would mention that you know, like uh, we're trying to get him back to Aboria, and we would like to sure. get out of this Feywild as we are from the Prime. 
Okay, you have anything to say, Baldron? Um, no, I'm gonna let them handle it. Uh, he doesn't really have much of a stake here, so, I mean, he agrees with Riviera, we're just trying to get back. He did the good deed at this point. Um, yeah, he's just gonna let Riviera do it. You wanna roll a diplomacy check, Riviera? Not really, but sure. Should I perhaps also roll a diplomacy check? Oh, he did well, okay. No, he just sounds very condescending and disapproving of the Feywild, and I wanted to get a idea of how that comes across to the elves. But he rolled really well. It was more of a, like, I don't want to be here, I want to go back to my home plane. Yeah, but that's not something an elf would say. This is but basically I'm... elven heaven. I know, but I'm not a typical elf. I, am I understand yeah, that, which is that, right? why that's... I asked you to roll a diplomacy check to see if you did it in a way that was rude and condescending or a way that was explaining your situation and your yeah. desire to leave. Well, off off that off that diplomacy check, I would I would say say that we are follower we are members of Nuon or members of the church of Nuon, me and the dwarf, and we are not happy here. We are weakened here. As he should be, but you should not be. I wasn't raised in a normal elven territory. I was raised by the church. Interesting. Okay. Um, he informs you that um, they will not tolerate any uh, outbursts on your part and that your behavior will be monitored. And then you hear a large creaking sound as the gates open. We're like the most lawful yeah, people uh, ever. Yeah, ever yeah, make gold. Gonna, yeah, he's just going to whisper to you, really, where they're ones that are going to have outbursts? Where the people here that are going to break laws? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that that's kind of the point, is that they don't have an ordered uh, civilization. They are free-willed people. And you are the ones that are going to infringe on their free will. Oh, so they're targeting our lawful side. Yeah, yeah, they are, but... Well, you don't have Baldwin's another side. A... You're neutral. Yeah. yeah. They're, gonna they're really chaotic, and you're lawful. They don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> Was he talking to me in a condescending term? Maybe oh, yeah, well? definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just said you're... You're a refugee from your own people and raised to effectively hate your own people and don't like being in their heaven, um, yeah. but you need their help. Yeah, well, yeah I'm, I'm going to intervene in this conversation. Um, I apologize for my friend. Uh, we've been through quite a lot traveling here. and The northern area is dangerous and has many perils, so he's view of this beautiful realm is a bit skewed. Okay, like I said, they let you inside. Um, the inside of the city, uh, I guess, would be fairly common to you, Azura. It is um, basically just like a giant druid grove, like all of the um, houses are up in trees. Um, it's all gardens and walkways and whatnot. Um, there are a lot of like animal uh, uh, pens and whatnot for uh, livestock. And uh, most of the businesses are located around the base of the trees. So you can walk through the city from uh, district to district. Uh, the districts are very vaguely defined. It's you know, literally be walking through a very rural area and then suddenly there's like a blacksmith shop in the middle of this farm yeah i was about to ask is there a blacksmith shop that uh, would sell exceptional uh court plate? uh yes they would definitely have that here would they be willing to sell me one if you have money for it cool well, an, an exceptional so... court plate is very expensive i just i know i'm looking for the exceptional documents i can't find yeah uh baldwin's gonna ask you all the stuff that is spoiling well, uh, 
before you go, Revere, um, if you're going to go and buy stuff, Revere's going to suggest you might want to go with Azura to try and get the best deals we can. We don't know when the next time we're going to shop is. So we're going to need to make this stuff go as long as possible. Yeah. Okay. Where is your exceptional doc, John? It should be in the documents thingy. I suggest before we actually decide what we buy, we make a stock of how much money we have. Yeah, that's going to take me a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can just... I would we, can, we can hand wave the actual uh, shopping part until later. Um, okay. It's yeah, not a big deal. Well, let's, so let's make an assumption that we sold all the stuff we don't need and then went and bought some stuff. Yeah, an exceptional court blade is 4,500 gold pieces. Oh, I didn't realize it was that much. Okay, best work it is. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Court blade is so expensive to start with. Yep. For context, a uh, an exceptional axe is 600. Great axe. Yep, uh, best work it is. Okay. Uh, well, I'll wait... For money because what I want to buy costs like eight thousand, so I don't know if I have enough. Um, I don't even think there's eight thousand on this list. Um, just eyeballing it for the uh, with three people, so probably like two to three k is what they're looking at. Um, yeah. I'll get the full numbers over the week, but um, do you want to roll the diplomacy check for the modifier I do for the selling? Since sure. I'm a greedy Thanks bastard, and I think we've established that. I'll use friends, so that's plus two on this. So twenty nine up. Right now I roll it. Can I assist on that? Uh yes. Um, generally, when you're rolling a group diplomacy check, you can't put um additional mods on it. Oh, okay. Like if you're selling a ring of uh, resist fire, you can roll. You can put do whatever you want there, but your friend spell only lasts for a couple of minutes, and you're gonna spend hours going around town selling everything. I don't help. Okay, what's uh, 27 is only a minor increase in price. You got that, don't you, uh, Baldron? Yeah, I, I've got the document. I'll. How much do you need for, for a better increase there? It's multiples of five, so. Uh, okay. 25 is 65, so an extra 15 percent, which is which is good. Um, I'll just, as I said, I'll factor that in when I put the money in. Oh, John, that leads me to my next question. If we're uh, if if Jay gets math is right, can I find a plus one master record blade here? Uh, yeah, probably. That'll cost okay. you uh, like twenty three hundred. Oh, is it four four fifty for a master work? Master work. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. The the uh, court blade. It, it's just to make to balance it out because it is such a broken weapon. It's like just being yeah being two handed and having the whole like hilt on it. Yeah. Well, it's two handed and the crit range. Yeah, the crit range is the big thing. Uh, the two-handed aspect, I think, is actually a deficit because the thin blade is a vastly superior weapon. It does D8 instead of D10. It's a one-handed weapon, so you can wield two of them. And it also has an 18 to 20 crit range. Yeah, but I want to be a big beefy boy. Mm. Yes, that's fine. Goes boom. If you want a really broken weapon, look at the Reaper Spear. Okay, so you guys shop around town. Um, this is uh, not a high um, population center, but it is a, uh, a city, so you should be able to get pretty much anything you can afford. Um, while we're going around, I'm going to try to keep my... Can I make keep an eye out for... Um, see if there's any sort of like mages or something here that would be able to help us get to a portal to Arborea? Oh, one second, I have an idea. Is there any chance that there was a bounty on the Chimera? Uh, you can roll a uh, gather information check. Okay. What is that? That's a... It's diplomacy with your knowledge local synergy. 21. Um, you ask around and you find out that there is a 500 gold piece bounty on the Chimera. Excellent. We'll go and show the brains as evidence and 
cash out the bounty. Okay. Um, do people actually? I got a side note. Do people ask, look at us funny because we are, we do have like I'm assuming Baldrin has uh, some sort of nuan marking on on him because I do. Yeah, I don't believe my armor has it. And are yeah. people look staring at us or like? Can I make a perception to see if people are kind of eyeing us up and down? Well, people are eyeing you up and down. You're weird. Do people? See, I'm assuming people here know what Nuon is, right? Um, I would think as a general rule, no. Someone who is more scholarly in religion uh, might know, but there wouldn't be any temples of Nuon here or any followers here because no one would want to be here if they're lawful. Like that is. Yeah, no, that's. The, I mean, I was just wondering if people wouldn't have a general idea and like look at us funny. No, common people generally only know the basics of their own religion. Like, if you go to a church and do a survey of all the Catholics in a church, I would say maybe 10% of them know more than the average person on the street. So, they, it's not something that people study. And if they were going to learn about any one religion, it would obviously be Coralon. You might find oh, that there are some... Uh, Sylvan elves who worship uh, Solinar. Um, there might be some other um, secondary deities here, but uh, it would mostly be elven gods and other fey uh, type stuff. Yep. So they would yeah. basically look at you and think you're weird. Um, there are dwarves in the fey realm, but they don't look like Baldrun. Um, they look much more like savages. So... Uh, they would recognize Baldrun as being a dwarf, but again, you just look weird. That's fair. I probably comb my hair. Right. I'm just, uh, I'm just insulting the dwarves over there. Just gonna try to carry myself as we walk through the town with like a little like, not an ego, but with an ego. Fair enough. Um, yeah, you were in the uh, uh, wild game where you went to the. Uh, the chaotic dwarves. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll do the same thing as Rivia at this point. Just try and look for a way to finish the mission and go back to doing new ones work in a new ones friendly location. Okay. Um, I guess after shopping, uh, I'll take one day to recover. I'll find a temple or shrine to Meliki and. Um, recuperate and pray there a while and then rejoin them to go and try to find someone who can help us get to Arborea. I think our first goal right now is to rest. And then Yeah, we... that, that's where I went to rest. Yeah, okay. the first thing he said is I rest and then we go and do stuff. Yeah. 